The muffled thunder of dialogue comes through the walls, then a chorus of laughter, then more thunder. Most of the laugh tracks on television were recorded in the early 1950s. These days, most of the people you hear laughing are dead. The stomp and stomp and stomp of a drum comes down through the ceiling. The rhythm changes. Maybe the beat crowds together faster, or it spreads out slower, but it doesn't stop. Up through the floor, someone's barking the words to a song. These people who need their television or stereo or radio playing all the time. These people are so scared of silence. These are my neighbors. These soundaholics. These quietophobics. Laughter of the dead comes through every hall. These days, this is what passes for home sweet home. At my apartment, the ceiling is pounding with some fast music. The walls are murmuring with panicked voices. Either an ancient cursed Egyptian mummy has come back to life and is trying to kill the people next door, or they're watching a movie. Under the floor there is someone shouting, a dog barking, doors slamming, the auctioneer call of some song. This is what passes for civilization. People who would never throw litter from their car will drive past you with the radio blaring. People who would never blow cigar smoke at you in a crowded restaurant will bellow into their cell phone. They'll shout at each other across the space of a dinner plate. These people who would never spray herbicides or insecticides will fog the neighborhood with their stereo playing Scottish bagpipe music, Chinese opera country and western. Outdoors a bird singing is fine, Patsy Cline is not. Outdoors the din of traffic is bad enough, adding Chopin's piano concerto in E minor is not making the situation any better. You turn up your music to hide the noise, other people turn up their music to hide yours, you turn up yours again. Everyone buys a bigger stereo system. This is the arms race of sound. You don't win with a lot of treble. This isn't about quality. It's about volume. This isn't about music. It is about winning. You stomp the competition with the bass line. You rattle windows. You drop the melody line and shout the lyrics. You put in foul language and come down hard on each curse word. You dominate. This is really about power. This musicoholics, these calmophobics. No one wants to admit we're addicted to music. That's just not possible. No one is addicted to music and television and radio. We just need more of it, more channels, a larger screen, more volume. We can't bear to be without it, but no, nobody's addicted. We could turn it off any time we wanted. The sound shivers through the walls, through the table, through the window frame, and into my finger. This distractionaholics, this focusophobics. Old George Orwell got it backward. Big Brother isn't watching, he's singing and dancing. He's pulling rabbits out of a hat. Big Brother's busy making sure you're always distracted. He's making sure you're fully absorbed. He's making sure your imagination withers. Until it is as useful as your appendix. He's sure your attention is always filled. And with this being fed, it's worse than being watched. With the world always filling you, no one has to worry about what's in your mind. With everyone's imagination atrophied, no one will ever be a threat to the world. The music and laughter eat away at your thoughts. The noise blots them out. All the sound distracts. Any more, no one's mind is their own. You can't concentrate. You can't think. There is always some noise worming in. Singers shouting, dead people laughing, actors crying, 
all these little doses of emotion. Someone is always spraying the air with their mood, their car stereo, broadcasting their grief or joy or anger all over the neighborhood. This isn't anything new. Experts in the ancient Greek culture say that people back then didn't see their thoughts as belonging to them. When ancient Greeks had a thought, it occurred to them as a god or goddess giving an order. Apollo was telling them to be brave. Athena was telling them to fall in love. Now people hear a commercial for sour cream potato chips and rush out to buy. But now they call this free will. At least the ancient Greeks were being honest.